section provides a deep dive into the TCFD recommended disclosures regarding governance and strategy. So we'll walk through each of these core elements in further detail, explain the specific recommendations that the TCFD set out under each of them, and talk a little bit about what good practice could look like in terms of disclosure. So the first of the core elements is governance, which relates to the organization's approach to governing climate change risk and opportunity across its organization at both board and management level. So the reason that investors really want to know about this is that they want to get context behind how the organization is really approaching embedding the financial risks from climate change within its business um, in terms of both its structure and its overall approach to these topics. So to understand these topics, it really wants to see that the appropriate level of attention is being given by both board and management to really factor these things into their decision making. So the first of the disclosure requirements that the TCFD set out under governance is for organisations to disclose the role of the board in overseeing climate related issues. And so this can consider particular information around the processes and frequency by which the board are understanding climate change. So, for example, uh, are there particular committees at board level that have responsibilities for climate change? If so, how often are these aspects on their agenda? And what's the role that they play in considering climate change particularly? Also, for the overall board, you might want to consider disclosing information such as when climate change is considered within major strategic decisions. So, for example, if the organisation is making an acquisition or a divestment, are climate risks and opportunities being factored into your thinking there? And finally, an important aspect to think about disclosing is how the board actually oversees progress. So where you've set out strategic goals and targets relating to climate change, what role does the board play in really making sure that those are delivered upon? The second aspect under governance is around the role of management in assessing and managing climate related issues. The TCFD weren't explicit about what management would mean within your organisation, but this is referring to any levels of senior governance below the board level. And so what's really helpful for you to set out in your reporting here is what the specific individual roles um, and committees and functions are that have oversight of climate change at a management level. So again, you'd want to think about describing what those individuals do, how they fit together within the organisational structure, and also how those individuals within the roles are kept informed of climate change issues that relate to their jobs. You might also want to think again about the role that management level organisations play in monitoring climate issues. So again, this is similar to the board level disclosure and thinking about what the performance measures are that management would consider. And a final aspect to think about for both of these aspects is how they connect to each other. So how does the management process inform what the board decides? And indeed, how do the decisions that the board level governance make inform management as well? So an example of a good practice disclosure here would be that of legal in general within their TCFD report. So as you'll be able to see on the left hand side, the governance structure for legal in general with regards to environment and climate sustainability is set out. So here they identify the different functions and committees that have responsibilities on environment. And then they also kind of outline on the right hand side for the group environment committee, which is one of their key committees, specifically what role that organisational committee plays in terms of deciding on targets, assessing risk and having general oversight of the strategy. So this is a really helpful example of the kinds of detail that it's great to provide under the governance element. So the second core element that we'll now cover is strategy, which is around the actual and potential impacts and risks that an organisation will face from climate change and both the opportunities as well. And so what's really important here is to be thinking about how those risks and opportunities are connected to wider business financial strategy. And so it's really about showing that the alignment of the business's overall direction in terms of its business model fits in with a low carbon future and aligns with the goals that it's stating that it wants to achieve. Another aspect that sits under the strategy pillar, which we'll talk about in further detail, is the concept of scenario analysis which is a tool that can be used to assess the resilience of an organization's strategy to different climate scenarios. So the first specific disclosure requirement that sits under strategy is for organizations to describe the climate related risks and opportunities that they've identified over the short, medium and long term. So here are some of the things that you would want to consider disclosing include what short, medium and long term means to your organization, as this can mean different things depending on the type of business that you're in. 
So it's really important to set out what those time horizons are that you're considering climate change over. And then within those time frames, you'll want to consider disclosing what the particular opportunities and risks from climate change your organisation expects to see are, and how you've determined what the financial impacts of those opportunities and risks will be for your business. The second disclosure aspect under strategy is regarding the impact of these risks and opportunities on business strategy and financial planning. So now that we've identified what those risks are, we're wanting to really start to think about how we can quantify and qualify those particular impacts that you'll face from those risks. So some of the areas that you might want to consider discussing in your reporting here include information on how risks and impacts from climate change could affect your products and services, your supply chain and wider value chain, and also how this plays out in terms of climate adaptation and mitigation activities. Another thing that's great to consider is how these risks and opportunities are informing your investment in research and development and other forms of capital expenditure. And finally, how you see these risks and opportunities impacting in your operations as well, and clarifying the context in terms of your particular locations and operation facilities that will be impacted by climate change. So really, it's about connecting from those risks and opportunities, thinking about them in a strategic and financial sense within your reporting. And so a good example of how this has been done is by the energy company Meridian Energy, who include a really helpful table within their TCFD reporting, which maps out these particular physical and transition risks and opportunities in a nice, easy to read summary table. And what's helpful here is that for each risk, the type, scale, likelihood, time frame, and financial implications are disclosed in a clear way. And it's also very useful that the financial impacts have both quantitative and qualitative information, really starting to show how the business has connected from these strategic issues to the financial and strategic aspects that they will face. And so the final aspect that sits under the strategy pillar, and one which has been new to many organisations in the context of TCFD, is regarding disclosing the resilience of the organisation's strategy, taking into consideration different climate scenarios including a two degrees Celsius or lower scenario. This is often referred to as the scenario analysis recommended disclosure. And so what this really aims to consider is how have the business used different climate scenarios to inform their planning processes? How have they considered how these scenarios will play out over different time frames? And what then are the implications for their business in terms of the different policy, macroeconomic and energy trends that will affect the way that these scenarios play out for their business. And so we'll now dive into this in a little bit more detail to explore it further. So firstly, let's start by considering what scenario analysis really is. So scenario analysis is a method for developing strategic plans that are more flexible and robust to a range of plausible future states. So what's important to say here is that it's about looking at alternatives um, and thinking beyond the business as usual in terms of strategic planning. So a scenario may be a pathway that the business could see playing out in the future that's plausible, but it doesn't necessarily have to be the pathway that it expects to see, or indeed the one that it might see as desirable, but it's really just about considering potential alternatives. So it can really be seen as a tool to think critically about climate change and to think about how those different scenarios might play out in different timeframes. So what's important to say here is that there's no right or wrongs when it comes to scenario analysis, because it's not about making predictions of performance or coming up with a exact prediction of future state, but really just the thinking about those different potential pathways and being more flexible and adaptable in your approach to planning for them. So here you'll see an example of some of the potential scenarios that your organisation might consider, summarised by Climate Action Tracker. So you'll see here that there are many different ways that climate change could play out over the next century, depending on the action that we all take as a society to achieve decarbonisation goals. So an ambitious scenario that we're all aiming to achieve is a 1.5 C degree future, which would have us significantly reducing emissions in the near term and right out over the remainder of the century. However, on current policies, we're obviously on track for a much greater degree of warming of three degrees or more which could potentially see quite different impacts. And so what scenario analysis allows us to do is to think about the different responses that we may have to these scenarios. So for example, what our emissions targets may be, 
what the energy mix may be that would affect our business, and what the different shifts in our customers' preferences and demands may be under these different scenarios. And so one thing to note here is that scenario analysis is very much an iterative process. So it really takes from a beginning stage of a low level of detail, a number of years to get towards having a full and complete picture. So organizations may start out on the left-hand side of the scale with more of a qualitative approach where they're simply looking at different narratives around scenarios. Over time, they can then seek to build out more qualitative information and quantitative detail as well to sit alongside this that enables them to really start to get underneath what those different impacts will be for their business. So this is really a journey that begins now and is one to get started with, but is something that can be developed over time. And so here's one example of how the company Rio Tinto has approached this within their reporting. So you'll see that they include information on resilience under different scenarios in their TCFD reporting. On the left hand side, we see a range of different scenarios that they've considered within their report, which represent different levels of emissions reduction. Then in the table on the top right, they disclose the particular assumptions that underpin each of the scenarios to help to see how they've really made different assumptions around energy intensity, global population growth and carbon pricing. And then finally, on the bottom right, we see an example output from this, where they've then overlaid these scenarios against the different commodities and minerals in which they are involved to start to really see how those different scenarios could affect the demand for different aspects of their business over time. So this is just one example of how this output could look. But of course, this will be completely different for each business. And it's really just about understanding this in your own context and making the disclosure that's most useful for you for, uh, to understand these different futures. And so to conclude this section, we've got a quick quiz question for you. So which of the following would you say are true of scenario analysis? Have a little think about these options and then think about what your response would be, which we'll go over in a second. So the following things could be true. Number one, it can be both qualitative and quantitative. Number two, it supports the development of flexible and robust strategies. Three, the aim is to predict future performance. Four, multiple scenarios should be considered. Or five, it's the same as science-based targets. And so we'll now run through what the correct options would be, which hopefully you are able to get. So number one is that it can be both qualitative and quantitative, which as we said is correct. We don't have to have a fully quantitative analysis to start with. It's really just about getting started in a narrative sense, if that's easier for your organization. Secondly, it supports the development of flexible and robust strategies. As we've seen, it's a tool to help you to plan and be more adaptive. The third answer is incorrect, which is that it aims to predict future performance. As we've heard, this isn't about making predictions. It's just about understanding options and outcomes. Number four is the right answer, which is that multiple scenarios should be considered. So although you might not want to do this straight off, you may find it easier to start with a single scenario. Over time, it would be great to build up to looking at multiple scenarios so you can understand your relative resilience to those. And finally, number five is another incorrect answer, which is that science-based targets and scenario analysis are actually different things. Science-based targets are about charting your pathway along a Paris Align mitigation route to reduce the impact of your organization on the climate. Whereas scenario analysis is really about considering those risks and opportunities to your business from those different emission scenarios.